This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream, which also comes with a free subscription to Nebula. Link in the description below. So if I was to take this, or this, or even this, and plug them in and sing into them, it should sound like a record, right? You'd think so, but it doesn't. See, the best microphones do a great job at capturing a sound as detailed and accurately as it is in real life. And when we hear a vocal in a finished mix, it's been through an extreme makeover. It gets everything from leveling out the dynamics with compression, changing the tonal balance with EQ, adding spatial elements like delays and reverbs, and then we give the singer a little extra love by putting them more in tune. And that last one's what we're gonna be focusing on today. Vocal tuning comes with a bit of controversy. To me, we listen to music to be entertained with sound, and I'm totally okay with pushing that experience beyond human capabilities. I still want to go see my favorite band or artist perform live and be able to pull it off, so it's important that vocal tuning uh, isn't being used as a crutch, but as far as the recording goes, go ahead and make it perfect. Recordings to me are like movies, and live music is like going to see a play. There's imperfections, and that's just part of live entertainment. We can all agree that actors don't actually have superpowers, but I still want to go see the new Avengers movie, and when someone flies across the screen, I don't want to see the harness keeping them in the air. That gets fixed in post-production. But for some reason, people get really offended by even just the word auto-tune. Now, auto-tune is another tool for another day, but you see what I mean. Vocal tuning is controversial stuff. Being that you're here trying to learn how to do it, I think I can safely assume that you're on the side of the fence that appreciates that extra layer of polish that a nicely tuned vocal adds to a production. Melodyne is one of those tools that maybe you got a demo of or picked up a version looking to tune some vocals and you throw it on the track and have no idea where to start. That was my experience with it now almost. 10 years ago, so I'm going to show you some of the things I've learned along the way. And just for fun, today's vocals will be Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles. Now, I don't have access to Harry's vocal tracks, and so instead, you're getting me. Now, this is good because I'm not really sure how it's going to go, and if it's not very good, then we'll get to see the limitations of Melodyne in action. As always, all the files from this session are available for you to download in the description below. Let's hit it. So we're going to pull up Melodyne as the first insert on our vocal track. It has to be first because we're basically making a whole new version, a whole new track. So this will be the tune version. And Melodyne will transfer the audio into its own folder so that we can manipulate it and tune it. So we want to give the dry signal straight off of the mic so that we can worry about things like EQ and compression later. If we put Melodyne later in the signal chain, then any of the processing that came before it would be baked into the tune vocal. So we're going to put it first, tune the dry signal, then we can worry about mixing later. So there's two ways to get sound into Melodyne. You could go up here and click Transfer, which you'll see activates this track, um, or we can click directly on this Record Enable button. Now this list over here is going to show us all of the tracks in our session that have Melodyne on them, which is really helpful because we can Record Enable all three, click Play, and it's going to transfer all three vocals into Melodyne at once. Now I've already transferred in the harmony, so I'm just going to show you that process on the lead vocal. We're going to hit Record Enable, we're going to make sure in our Pro Tools session that we have the segment we want to transfer in highlighted and then we're just going to hit play watermelon sugar high 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 watermelon sugar now, almost every other DAW outside of Pro Tools has much better integration with Melodyne, and it'll automatically transfer the audio into the plugin, and you don't have to sit around and wait for it. But with Pro Tools, we do. So once we've transferred the audio in, we see these big orange shapes. And these shapes are a little misleading because they're not actually showing us the pitch. They're showing us an outline of the waveform. It's how Melodyne shows volume. They'll move up and down and snap to notes. So we think that they're pitch, but they're not. So if I zoom in a bit, we could see that through the center of each of these big orange shapes is this thin red line. And that line is showing us the exact modulation of pitch across this whole note. And that's what we want to focus on when we're determining where to put the note in this pitch lane. The pitch lanes are these gray and white lines um, that line up with the piano roll on the left-hand side. 
Melodon uses averaging to determine where to place a note, and so it's not always a matter of just snapping it to the closest one. Um, so if we take a look at this opening line here, you can see that it starts off kind of in the center of this line, and then it goes flat. So if I double click, it's going to snap it using the average of all of the modulation across this note, and it actually pulls the whole note flat. So it makes it worse than it was if I just left it alone. So we're going to want to separate this note into its two parts, the part that's sort of in tune and the part that goes flat. So to do this, we're going to use the note separation tool. And we can pull up our tools um, just by right clicking. And the note separation tool is going to be the furthest one to the right. Your tools are also just right up here at the top if that's easier. I prefer to just double click and slide around and grab the one I need. We're going to grab the note separation tool. And we're just going to find the place where it starts to split. So right here we can see this is sort of in tune. And then we dip a little bit flat. So I'm going to make that cut right where it dips flat. I'm going to switch back to my pitch tool. And now I can double click these two notes to lock them in place. When I double click on the second half, it's going to pull it to the wrong note because it was closer flat than it was in tune. And so now we can pop that in place and this whole phrase should be nice and in tune. So I'm going to jump ahead a few measures because I want to show you guys how to deal with vibrato using the pitch drift tool. If I look from the peak here of this vibrato to this vibrato to this vibrato, as well as the bottoms here, it's moving in an upward motion. And we want the vibrato to be centered across the pitch lane. But we also don't want to get rid of any of the vibrato. So we're going to select our pitch drift tool, which if we go back to our tools menu, pitch tools, it's going to be the third one down. All right, so check out what happens when I click and drag down on this note. OK, so it maintains all of the vibrato and all of the sort of natural um, movement that the singer had on this note. And it just centers it in that pitch lane. And this is sort of the secret weapon to Melodyne. I mean, compared to other tuning software out there, Melodyne is known for being the most natural. And it's because you can maintain all of that movement of the singer's voice while still correcting for any drift. OK, so the last tool that I want to show you today is the modulation tool. This is sort of the opposite of the drift tool. This one will be a little bit more destructive. will give you more of that vocoder sound, kind of T-Pain auto-tune thing. And if you're after a really heavily tuned sound, you can still achieve that in Melodyne with some of the added benefits of being able to do it a bit more manually. OK, so I'm just going to do a really extreme version and jack it up to 100% and show you what that sounds like. To get to this tool, you're going to right click, go to the pitch menu, and it is the second one down. So first what I'm going to do is just zoom out real quick. I'm going to highlight everything with Mac. That is Command A. Um, I'm going to use the pitch tool to center everything. And then I'm going to use the new one, the pitch modulation tool. And we're going to double click here. And you can hear how extreme it is. Watermelon sugar high. 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 Watermelon sugar Okay, so it gives you a really drastic, really tuned sound if you push it all the way to 100. I use this tool the least, but it can be really helpful on a note where you just want to like hone in the vibrato a little bit or tighten up the modulation across a sustained note. And if you don't push it too far, you can get some really tight vocal sounds. So just an example of using the pitch modulation tool um, without taking it too far. If I play this phrase here, focus when the lead says sugar, the second half of that note. Watermelon sugar. To my ear, it goes just a little sharp, and we're talking very subtle here. But I could use the pitch mod tool to bring this note a little bit closer to center without flatlining it. So it doesn't need to be an on or off type thing. We can pull it in. And let's take a look at that. Watermelon sugar high. Watermelon sugar. All right, so it's nice and in tune, and it doesn't sound over processed. Now I want to show you what it looks like when we put them all together. I'm going to go over to this note here and zoom in kind of hard. This one has some vibrato that doesn't kick in until the end. So I would treat the end different than the beginning. And I'm going to call this the sustain, and this will be the vibrato section. So we're going to switch tools first to the note separation tool. And we just want to make these different notes so that we can process them differently. I'm going to make this cut right before it starts going into a vibrato section. Let's actually handle that first. Let's go back to our pitch tool double click. Let's go to our pitch drift tool and pull this down a little bit because we can see there's a little drift here. We're starting a touch flat and rising upwards. So let's pull that down just a touch. Cool. Centers it a little bit more. 
Now we can double click on the sustain of this note, and that's real subtle, okay? But we can see it still has a bit of modulation, all right? So it comes up, it comes back into center, we've got a little wave here, and then we start vibrato. So what we can do is first I like to see what I can get away with with the drift tool. So let's pull this in, and that's going to do 99% of the sound, and we could probably leave it right there. For the sake of demo, I want to show you what including the pitch modulation tool does. So let's first take a listen to that. Watermelon sugar high. Watermelon sugar high. Cool, that sounds great. We could stop right there. Again, for the sake of demo, I'm going to show you what it sounds like when we include a little extra love using the pitch mod tool. So we're going to split this one more time. So if we zoom in real tight, we can see that there's two more parts. There's the sustain that starts about little bit into it. And then we have this bit, which is the transition. Even though it's the same note, it's the, the bit of the note that's transitioning from the word before it. So let's cut this to treat it as its own thing. Switch to the pitch tool, lock the transition in place. And now let's look at the sustain. Technically, it's already in tune because we snapped it while it was attached to the transition. But Melodyne was factoring in the transition when it snapped in the sustain. So if we double click again, again, very subtly, it does move. So we can use the note separation tool to really, really tell Melodyne, I want you to focus on this bit here and leave this out of the equation. So in this case, we separated the transition into the note from the sustain of the note from the vibrato into three pieces that Melodyne can analyze and average and lock into tune independently. Now the sustain is where we can get away with bringing down some of that pitch modulation and tightening it up even more. Cool, so I'm gonna to go to the sustain and I'm just gonna pull this down very slightly. And you see some of those ripples start to go away. Now if I pull it too far, it turns into pretty much a straight line. And again, that's gonna give us that vocoder kind of auto tuning sound. Now, because I've separated this from the transition in, from the vibrato, the sustain can be really tight, and I want to show you what this sounds like. Watermelon sugar high. Now I hear the sustain get a little too synthesizer sounding, um, but most people would never pick up on that. If I heard that in a mix, I don't think I could pull it out, but we do want to be a little bit more subtle, so let's reset that. We can double click to set us back to zero, and let's just pull this in a little bit here. There we go. So it seems like a lot to do to one note. We cut it into three pieces, and we use different tools to lock these different things into place. But I promise you, the more comfortable you get, the more practice you give this, the quicker you're going to make decisions, you're going to know exactly what tool you need for what note, and you'll zip through a whole song in no time. So today we covered a couple of things. We talked about the main tools that I use to get a vocal feeling nice and in tune, and we went over some of my basic workflow to hopefully help you understand a little bit more of what's going on under the hood. If you found this video helpful, I think you'd really enjoy Nebula. Nebula is a now Streamy Award nominated platform made by educational creators like me where we get to really experiment with the types of content we make. There's no algorithms and there's no ads, so you just browse for what you want to watch and go ahead and watch it. It's home to some of YouTube's top educational creators like Thomas Frank, Legal Eagle, Renee Ritchie, and lets us collaborate in ways that wouldn't always be possible on YouTube. A lot of times we have to make cuts on YouTube to keep our videos quick and snappy, but the extended versions all live on Nebula. So what does this have to do with today's sponsor, CuriosityStream? They're the place for your big budget, multi-episode documentary series with literally thousands of titles on their platform. Now, I'm a little obsessed with future concepts and have been loving the series Dream the Future, but they've got everything from science and space to technology, history, nature, and then some. So being that CuriosityStream loves educational creators and supporting educational content, we worked out a deal where if you sign up with the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash michaelworth, you'll get access to both CuriosityStream and Nebula. Now, usually CuriosityStream gives you guys 26% off their annual plan, but now, through January 3rd, they're running a holiday special, giving you 41% off. Under $12 a year for both platforms sounds like a super awesome package. So again, check the link below for access to literally all of your educational video content needs. It's a great way to support my channel and educational content in general. I hope that your brains are feeling a bit more full than they did at the beginning of this video. And if you did learn something, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe so that I can make more of these and you get to hear about them.